Welcome into Sports Zone, everyone. Happy Thursday to you. I'm Sports Director Matt Dowell, and we are joined tonight by a very special guest. One of my favorite people, Chennis Berry, the head coach of the Benedict football team, is in the house. Coach, how are you? You say it, man. I thanks, know. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks for staying up late with us here on the Sports Zone. Absolutely. We got to talk about this Benedict football team because you guys are absolutely crushing it this season. Four and mm -hmm. so far this year. Three of those games on the road what is working so well for you guys this season and a season that had a lot of pressure after an undefeated regular season last year well to god be the glory first and foremost man you know it's a lot of a lot of good things happening over there at benedict college and the guys are bought in the coaches are bought in and we believe you know ultimately at the end of the day the young men are really bought into what we're doing and how we're doing and i think we're playing well on all all three phases offense defense and special teams and when you put that mix together you feel like and yeah, at the end of the day, you feel like you have a pretty good football team. Speaking of that, I was kind of looking at all of your points totals and the differentials. Your offense has put up 171 points mm -hmm. in four games. Mm -hmm. The teams you play have put up 10. Mm -hmm. That's a very, very big yeah, disparity. What I mean, what's the key to the dominance? I know it's obviously X's and O's, but I mean, what is the key to, to all this? We're, we're, we're just falling in love with the process. I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, you know, you can only win the down. If you win the down and then you win the series and you win the drive, ultimately at the end of the day, you put those together and you end up winning the football game. And, and the guys are just buying in. You know, our philosophy is on offense and defense, if we can win first down and put teams behind the sticks, all right, on defense, we'll get them into third and long and then our D-line and our defense just get a chance to go hunting. On offense, if we can win first down four or more yards, we'll put ourselves in third in manageable situations. Now we can move the ball and continue to move the change. It's all about on offense, first down, touchdowns. All right. Eventually, you'll get the touchdowns. You keep getting first downs, and on defense, eliminate them from even getting the opportunity to get touchdowns. So that philosophy really has been uh, bought into our young men, and I think I think these guys are really locked in, loaded as we continue to go for the rest of the season. When you have this much success. You have a lot of star players. Your defensive tackle, Luber Janellis, this week named a semifinalist for the Campbell Trophy, which is college football's premier scholar athlete award. How proud are you of him? So proud. I mean, this young man you're talking about, amazing person, first and foremost. He's a man of God. He's an amazing student. He's an amazing person. I don't think Luber has made a beast since he's been at Benedict. And he's an amazing football player. Uh, I'm just grateful that the fruits of his labor is coming into fruition and he's able to have the success that he has. But one thing I talked to the team this morning about Luber, just um, giving him acknowledgement for the award that he won in, in terms of Division II National Defensive Player of the Week, and it's never about Luber. You know, for him, he's always giving honor to his teammates and to his brothers, and he's just a selfless individual. I'm very, very grateful that Luber Danellis is on the Benedict College football team. When you're outscoring teams 171 to 10, obviously you got a lot of star players. What other players right now do you think are really shining? Well, I'll start on the defensive side of the ball. Those guys are playing amazing ball. And it starts with the big guys up front. Not only is Luber playing well, but we got Aaron Miller. Aaron Miller is getting after it as well as one of the defense ends. And Jaden Broughton, JB number eight, I mean, he's sacking people left and right. And he's playing great in the, in the run game as well. If you take it to our second level, you got Amari Pettis, our starting Mike linebacker. What a great season he's having. He's controlling it all, making sure the front is set the way he wants to set it. And then right here from, from Columbia, South Carolina, Dedrick Starks. You know, he played at Irmo High School. He's having a great year at our wheel linebacker in our secondary. I mean, everybody talks about our front because they do a great job of getting it done. Uh, but those guys in the back end, it's like, it's like, I mean, just amazing young men and amazing talent with our starting uh, rover. Uh, he does a great job. That's Day Day Peterson. He does an awesome job. Our starting corner from Irmo High School as well. All right. He's, a, he's doing a great job. His name is Giovanni Melador. He's holding it down. Jerron Kilpatrick, number zero. He's amazing. And then we have a pro prospect that's doing some uh, uh, outstanding things. All right. And this, he's had a, about 12 or 13 pro scouts come see him. That's Josh Hayward. I mean, he's getting it done. And Diego <laughs> Addison, who played it. At AC Florida High School, man, he's he's back there at free safety. He's really doing some awesome things. So all together, our defense, they're number one in total defense in the country and a lot of statistical categories in Division II. So we're excited how they're playing on the defense side of the ball. Chennis, I know you talked about the defensive guys, but what about the offense and the special teams? You guys have just so much talent on this squad. Absolutely. Our coaches, first of all, have done a great job in recruiting. And when you're building your offense, it has to start with the big guys up front. 
And uh, those guys are doing an amazing job building chemistry, start by, starting by our, our starting center, Mitch Romick. I mean, he's a returning starter for us, as well as our left guard, Big Roger Smith. We call him Big Baby. He, he wears jersey number one in practice. He won one of the single di digits, but he wears 73 in the games. But he's doing some awesome things, as well as a lot of the other young men up front. And then, you know, everybody was asking about our quarterback situation. Uh, and our, our quarterback from last year decided to leave and go into the transfer portal. But, you know, in Benedict College, man, we give other guys opportunities. So we recruited a young man by the name of Aeneas Dennis. And what a special talent he is. He's a transfer that came in and fell in love with our process and what we're doing. And he's lighting it up right now. I mean, he's through probably double-digit touchdowns and zero turnovers. And he's really moving our offense and managing our offense. And then our guys in the backfield, Oh, I, I feel like we have some special running backs. Not only the guys that everybody knows, Zaire Scotland and DeAndre Duhart, but we also had Jalen Taylor, uh, where's number 28. He's lighting it up this year, as well as Izzy Rose. Those guys are playing some really, really good ball. And then we have some guys on the perimeter. Jalen Jones, a transfer receiver. He transferred from Presbyterian. He's doing some awesome things as well. And uh, I tell you what, we have something special. And this is a freshman we have. Just keep an eye on jersey number 10, Caden High from Atlanta, Georgia. He is lighting it up. I think he's leading our team in, in receptions right now. So we have some guys that are being really explosive on the offensive side of the ball. And then I have to talk about special teams. You know, you're, you're talking about there's three phases in the football. Everybody talks about offense and defense. But our special teams unit is doing an amazing job, led by our place kicker. He's a transfer. His name is Tom Piccarillo. He transferred from Mount Union University up in Ohio, believed in our process, and he's putting it through the uprights. And then we have a, a punter named Charlie Cooper. He also transferred to us as well from Kennesaw State University, and they're really lighting it up. And we have probably the best long snapper in the league, and that's Dylan Geese. He's a returner from last year. So when you put all those pieces of the puzzle together, you feel like you got a really, really good football team, because it takes all three phases. So I'm grateful to be the head football coach at Benedict College. So many of those guys that you mentioned are local guys. Mm -hmm. How much is the local talent important to what you're building at Benedict? Well, that's the gas tank philosophy we have. We, we believe in starting in the backyard. I mean, some great talent in this Palmetto State, and you have to start in your backyard. And the high school coaches have bought into what we're doing. They believe in what we're doing. And when you can go in your backyard and get people from the Columbia area, now you put more people in the seats on game day. So it's kind of a two-fold deal. We want to make sure we recruit local talent, but we also at the same time want to make sure that we put people in the seats because I think we have something special that we're building on 1600 Harden Street. I'm so fascinated by the coaching process. You guys have so many things you have to keep track of, not just the players, but you know the facilities, the business side of it. How do you balance everything as a head football coach for a team that is very successful? You know, they, they say the good Lord gives his toughest assignments to his strongest soldiers. And, you know, we have to be, you have to love it. You have to love what you do. I mean, we are in there early in the morning and we leave late at night. And I tell our players all the time, we should probably spend more time with our players and our staff than we do with our own family. So they have to be a, you know, a love for it. And, and you have to balance time and about uh, time management. We talk about the players' time management, but we also, as, as uh, fathers and husbands, we have to have time management as well because yep. we got to make sure we keep mama happy at the house. So, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, it's, it's great. It's a great profession. Uh, I look at it all as well as a ministry because you get an opportunity to be around 100 plus young men every day, not just in the pool pit on Sundays. And we're just getting ready for this game we call life because we know that there's, there's one thing guaranteed about this game of football. It has an expiration date and we got to get these young men ready to be fathers and husbands and leaders in this community. Winning football games, but winning souls as well. You spoke about balancing everything. What do you specifically, what are your outlets? What do you do for fun? Like, what do you do when you're like, I can't think about Benedict right now. I got to go do something else. What does Chinnis Berry do? You know, that's, that's tough because I, I love what I do. Uh, but also, you know, I have, I have two, um, two things. I, I have several things I like to do. I like spending time with family. You know, I have three teenage kids that, you know, I have a 17-year-old. I have a 16-year-old, and I have a, today, her birthday, my baby girl's turning 13 today. Oh, happy so birthday. I, oh, absolutely. So I have to be able to balance all that. And then also has to be a husband as well. So I like being around family. You know, ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm a football guy. I love football, but I love old school music. 
I'm gonna listen to some old school <laughs> music, and I love to eat, man. So you know, anytime you can find a good restaurant for Coach Barry, I, I definitely appreciate it. But those are things that I probably do off the field more than anything. Uh, I, I don't rest very well because whether I'm off or not, I'm up at four in the morning, and my hamster is spinning in my head trying to get better and trying to trying to win the day, whatever it is. And we just focus on winning the day and just going one and zero every day. And I believe if we can continue to go one and zero and win today then those days will mount up, and then you look at it at the end of the day, we'll, we'll win the week. Speaking of going 1-0, you take on Morehouse College uh, this Saturday, only your second home game of the season so far. What can you tell us about this matchup? Welcome home, man. I'm excited to be <laughs> back in the jungle. Charlie Johnson Stadium, let's pack it up. I'm, you know, I have a vision. I want to see 11,000 screaming fans in that stadium. I hadn't seen that yet, but I, I hope this weekend is the weekend, but excited about this weekend opportunity. We've had a great week of practice. The guys have been locked in. We don't worry about team's records. We just focus on the opponent that we're getting ready to face and chop wood and carry water and fall in love with the process. So Morehouse is coming in. Uh, I think they got a really good football team. They do some great things on all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams, and we're going to have to be ready to rock and roll. But like I tell the young men, if you go hard all week in practice, if you practice so hard, make uncomfortable comfortable in practice. By the time game day comes, the only thing difference is there's more people watching. So if you go hard every day, the fruits of your labor will show on Saturdays at kickoff at 6 o'clock. I know you're focusing on Morehouse College right now, but there is a rivalry here in Columbia between you and Allen. The Yellow Jackets are 4-0 to start the year as well. I know you guys don't play until November, but are you keeping your eye on what they're doing over there at Allen? Great job. Teddy Keaton doing an amazing job, but my focus is going 1-0, and and we're locked and loaded on Morehouse College, and we'll get to that bridge when we get there, but it'll be exciting. I mean, it's a beautiful thing to be able to have right there on Harden Street, uh, two historically black colleges and universities, being able to do great things and not only be local, uh, recognized locally, but be recognized nationally as well. So kudos to Allen University and what they're doing over there. But I got to focus on Benedict College and trying to go one and hold this week versus Morehouse College. Before we let you go, is there anything else you want to add while you're here on our show about Benedict, about this season? I'll let you have the floor. I'll tell you what, just the excitement on campus. You know, our whole campus community, led by our president, Dr. Rosamond Clark Artis, she has that whole entire campus rocking and rolling. Not only, you know, of course, everybody sees the football and the band and things of that nature, but our academics are, 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 are head and shoulders above the rest. I mean, we're doing some great things with, with doing things in the community. We have some things coming up where we're going to work with some family homes homeless families in the community and getting our guys involved with things not only at Benedict College but in this Columbia community as well. So we're just grateful for all the support. Uh, we have some people that's really bought into our program. They've been great to us all throughout the city. I go down the street sometime. I go to different restaurants, to Walmart, to Food Lion. Everybody's saying go Tigers. So it's a great day right now to be a Tiger. We're just grateful for all the support we're receiving from this whole entire city of Columbia as well as the state of South Carolina. And we're getting recognized nationally as well. So we just want to keep falling in love with the process and keep going 1-0 every day. And I like our chances this, this football season. All right, Benedict at home against Morehouse College on Saturday. Kickoff at 6 p.m. at Charlie W. Johnson Stadium. We're going to be there for that one as Benedict is finally back at home. Chinnis, thank you so much for coming on our show. We appreciate it, man. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It's a great day to be a Tiger. All right. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. If you want to stay up to date with this story and much more, subscribe to our Watch Fox YouTube page. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you never miss an update.